Hey folks, this is Kalani. I hope you're all excited for the last week of Battle for Azeroth's pre-patch event. We're well on our way to another all-out war. We just need a match or two to really get the party started. That's probably going to happen next week, and then we're full speed ahead into the next expansion. I'm super excited to finally get to play everything on live servers where it actually means something, instead of on the beta where everything will get swept away. But while we twiddle our thumbs and patiently wait for the next two weeks to roll by, how about we look at another class and the changes they've received going into BFA. We might struggle to find the class I'm looking for, they're known to be quite sneaky, but we can probably find a few over in Darkshore camping a few quest monsters. Let's see how the rogues are shaping up, what they're good at, where they're lacking, and ultimately, are they worth playing in Battle for Azeroth? Rogues have three DPS specs, which are all melee DPS specs. It's actually the only class with all of its specs as melee DPS, so that's kind of cool. And each spec plays out pretty differently. Outlaw uses a slow main hand, like a sword or mace, to deal hefty amounts of damage with each swing, while Assassination and Subtlety prefer a dagger in each hand to stab at their foe's kidneys a little easier. Or ankles, I guess, if you're a no more goblin. I love it when a class with three DPS specs has some real difference between the playstyles, to the point where if you were to roleplay each spec, you'd probably be an entirely different character. A bruising pirate looking for booty, a master of poisons and suffering, or someone whose shadows clings to them so tightly, you're not sure if they're actually there or not. Of course, each rogue spec will probably just end up doing the same thing, hiding in stealth until some poor, unsuspecting victim walks by and is suddenly set upon with a variety of stuns. So, how is each spec playing right now? Let's have a look at Outlaw first. Ever since the switcheroo from combat to Outlaw, I feel like the spec has had way more flavour. Who doesn't want to be a pirate? Swing your sword left and right, stab a few landlubbers in the gut, and finish them off with a quick shot from your concealed pistol. It's wonderful. Their main ability, which affects playstyle, is Roll the Bones, which can provide you with a wide variety of buffs and even multiple buffs if you get lucky. This one ability will choose your fate in every encounter you take part in, Roll well and you'll soar to the top of the DPS meters. Roll badly and, well, I guess you're going to spend quite a bit of time re-rolling your fate there, buddy, which just means lower DPS. This also means if you want to get the most out of your Outlaw Rogue, you're going to need to learn each buff and what it does, but most importantly, whether or not your current combination of buffs is worth keeping, or if you should re-roll for a chance at something better. I feel like every good Outlaw Rogue needs a weak aura or sound file to help them quickly do the maths to see if they need to re-roll or not. Every time Roll the Bones goes off and I get something great, I want to hear Davy Jones from Pirates of the Caribbean. Four fours. Or something cool like that. Besides the dice rolling, Outlaw plays really fluidly. I think it's actually the smoothest spec to play in most situations. A few sinister strikes and a half cost pistol shot and you should have 4-5 to five combo points. Spend them on dice rolls if you need to, or dispatch if you're happy with your buffs. I don't find myself standing around just waiting for energy to do something like the other two specs, which is really nice. But what about their damage? Well, numbers are still being tuned here and there, but right now Outlaw is doing pretty well. Their kit is built for high AoE and cleave damage thanks to Blade Flurry, which allows you to hit everything around your target for reduced damage, but that means you have completely passive AoE while Blade Flurry is active, as long as you're actually using abilities on your primary target. You can kick out some crazy numbers and Outlaw is definitely going to shine in encounters with lots of adds or lots of cleave potential. As for single target, they shouldn't do too badly, but if you can't make use of Blade Flurry, that's just lost potential. You're going to be reliant on RNG and good luck no matter what you're doing, but I feel like single target gets punished a little more if you get bad rolls. At least with Blade Flurry going, your damage is being spread quite far. On single target, if you're not doing much damage, there's no real safety net there to help boost your numbers. An Outlaw Rogue's strength lies in its fluid combat, high potential in cleave and AoE encounters, and its general theme is pretty awesome. Its weaknesses always come back to roll the bones and RNG. If you're unlucky, your damage will be lower, and there's nothing you can do about it besides re-roll. It's incredibly frustrating to have inconsistent damage, especially if you're required to meet certain DPS checks for specific encounters. Whether or not you succeed is literally down to rolls of the dice. Rogues in general should be very strong in both raid and dungeon environments though, thanks to their utility. All rogues bring tricks to the trade, which should help out your tanks if they're having some issues keeping aggro on large packs of monsters, and between Cheat Death, Faint, and Cloak of Shadows, you also have amazing defensive utility to keep you safe from all manner of damaging effects. Rogues will most likely be a soak class again in Battle for Azeroth, assuming we get any soaking mechanics in the raids, simply because they have some of the best tools to deal with a lot of nasty damage. 
As we did for the other videos, let's have a look at the Azerite powers and see if anything sticks out for Outlaw Rogues. How about increasing the damage of Between the Eyes for every combo point you spend and it having a chance to instantly grant 4 combo points? That's another free finisher right there. Seems like cheating, but that's what I would expect from a pirate. Here's one which provides you with a little bit of a safety net for your DPS. If you only roll one buff, you gain a nice boost of agility. Probably not quite enough to make up for the lack of a second or third buff, but hey, free damage is free damage. And just in case you thought your dice were just for rolling buffs, how about some extra damage on your sinister strikes for each combo point spent on your rolls? I'm glad there's some semi-interesting interactions with these Azerite powers at least. Let's move on to Assassination, where you trade your sword away for yet another dagger. Assassination plays very differently from combat. You don't really have an amazing amount of flavor or class fantasy left with how much was removed with the artifact weapons, but what you're left with is what Assassination has always kind of been. A master of poisons and bleeds who will excel in any situation where their damage over time effects can last for a long duration. Each poke and prod of their dagger pulses poison through their target's flesh, and they'll use their combo points to rip a hole in whatever they can reach. Maintaining poisons and rupture is where most of your damage comes from, which also includes Garot from your stealth abilities. Using Vanish periodically to apply both a new Garot and a powered up Rupture will give you an edge as assassination, but most of the time you'll have your poisons and bleeds ticking, and you'll be free to spend your combo points on some Envenoms. Assassination might seem simple at first glance, but keeping track of all of your bleeds across multiple targets can get pretty interesting if you don't stay focused. Assassination can be a little slow at times though, you'll find yourself standing around waiting for energy a lot more often when compared to Outlaw, which which could end up being a little tedious for some players. Because of how their abilities work, Assassination will generally excel in any single target situation, or any situation where they can easily apply Rupture to several targets which stay alive for an extended period of time. Ads which die in seconds aren't really going to do anything for Assassination, but multiple bosses which are active at the same time and stacked on top of each other can work wonders. Because of this, I think Assassination will do really well on bosses throughout dungeons, as well as in high Mythic Plus keys where trash monsters will stay alive for much longer. They also do pretty great in raids as they should always have a boss to hit. An Assassination Rogue's strengths lie in their reliable single target damage and ability to multi-dot stacked up targets. Its weaknesses come from their lack of burst, both in terms of single target and AoE damage. They need to ramp up to reach their full potential, so if the monsters are dying too quickly, Assassination won't really get a chance to shine. Thankfully, that shouldn't happen on bosses too often. They can also be a little slow to play due to their energy restrictions. That slower pace might benefit you though, depending on how you prefer to play and how much planning you might have to do to get into position to soak some lovely raid mechanics, because Assassination also comes equipped with everything we mentioned previously, Cloak of Shadow Shadows, Faint, and Tricks of the Trade. Let's have a very quick gander at Assassination's Azerite powers to see if we can find anything cool. Here's one which really doubles down on that multi-dot aspect of Assassination, gain a boost of agility for every enemy suffering from your rupture. Spread those bleeds around and you're rewarded with even more damage. Or how about some extra combo points from Stealth Garotes? That should make it a lot faster to get your first rupture out and guarantee it's within your stealth window. Free combo points are always nice. And this last one is a little less exciting but still cool, and Venom deals more damage for each combo point spent and lasts a second longer if it crits. And last but not least, we have Subtlety. Sub Rogues play quite differently yet again, focusing on a lot of different damage increases like Nightblade, Symbols of Death, and Shadow Blades. They have the most puzzle pieces when it comes to rotations and gameplay. Outlaw really only has Roll the Bones, two combo point generators, and two spenders, one of which you won't use unless you get some lucky rolls. Assassination has one combo point generator and two spenders, which make up most of their gameplay. Both specs have one cooldown each, but Sub Rogues have one general generator, one stealth generator, two spenders, 3 if you want to AoE with a talent, as well as a minor cooldown in Symbols of Death, a major cooldown in Shadow Blades, and they also have to Shadow Dance to make use of their powerful stealth abilities. There's a lot to juggle, but it's also a lot of fun when you get it right. You can pull off some really fun combos and your eviscerates can hit for crazy amounts of damage, especially if you have some extra targets to work with. Sub rogues have a really weird ability to funnel cleave and AoE situations into amazing single target DPS. You don't necessarily deal damage to everything around you in huge chunks like outlaw rogues, but you'll be absolutely chunking the health of your main target. The damage is real when you can shuriken storm once and get a full bar of combo points. Shuriken storm and eviscerate spam is insane, especially because Shuriken Storm increases the damage of Eviscerate for each target hit. Combo that with the damage bonus of Nightblade and Symbols of Death and you have a powerful recipe for crazy damage. 
Because of this, subrogues will excel in situations where they have a priority target with several other targets around them which last for a long time. Getting those extra combo points and the bonus damage on Eviscerate can mean leaving adds alive for longer will actually benefit a subrogue, although asking your other DPS to not go crazy with their AoE might be a bit too much to ask for most groups. They should deal with single target damage fairly well, but subtlety doesn't actually get that much from any AoE encounters where the mobs die really fast. They don't really have great burst AoE, especially if they don't also have a priority target to pile their eviscerates into. Outside of a specific talent, they also can't spend combo points on extra AoE damage. I feel like sub usually has something to do, there isn't as much downtime or blank space as when you're playing assassination, even with the energy regen being a little slow, and if you don't have something to do right that second, you probably have something to think about doing, there's a lot of planning involved with playing sub well. Subtlety Rogue's strengths lie in their versatile kit and various cooldowns which allow them to deal considerable single target damage. They also benefit hugely from extra targets which stay alive just like Assassination, but instead of spreading damage over time effects to everything, the sub rogue will just want the extra combo points generated from Shuriken Storm. Their weaknesses can be found in low burst AoE and being a little complicated to play. It takes quite a lot of effort, practice and planning to get the most out of a Subtlety Rogue. Let's finish this up by looking at Sub Rogue's Azerite traits. Here's one which increases the damage of Shadow Strike each time you use Shadow Strike. Lasts for 1 minute and stacks up to 10 times. With Shadow Dance on a 1 minute cooldown that should be constantly active if you're using your cooldowns properly. Here's another one which increases the damage of Backstab if you strike from behind, which just adds on to the base 20% damage bonus you get to make sure you're stabbing people in the butt, and then just in case you were hoping and wishing you could have a little bit of extra damage for just a little bit longer, how about an extra 0.5 seconds? added onto Symbols of Death for each Backstab or Shadow Strike. Sounds good to me. Overall, I think rogues are going to be a great addition to any group. Each spec plays out differently and they excel in their own areas to always bring meaningful damage. They also have an amazing set of defensive abilities which should allow them to handle almost any situation with ease. Massive magic damage incoming? No problem. Large amounts of constant AoE? Let me help out the healers. Tanks having problems with aggro? How about some little tricks of the trade? They're so versatile that I think you can't go wrong with them at the moment. Hopefully one spec will always have some decent damage numbers if the others end up getting nerfed too. They can't nerf all three specs, right? If sub isn't doing too well, well you have outlaw and assassination. If Outlaw isn't doing too hot in the next patch, Assassination should still be fine and maybe Sub got a buff. It might not be the playstyle you prefer, but at least you should be able to stay decently high on your guild's damage meters if that's something that worries you. One thing to consider though is that two of your specs use two daggers, and right now agility daggers are separated from intellect daggers on loot tables. No one else uses agility daggers, meaning you pretty much have to loot your own weapons unless you're running with some friendly rogues. Gearing up those weapon slots could prove to be a little difficult and time consuming if you aren't that lucky, now that personal loot is the default loot. So are rogues worth playing in Battle for Azeroth? In my opinion, absolutely. I'm definitely going to have a rogue as one of my alts, I've been having way too much fun with them on the beta to not level one up and play it when this whole thing finally goes live. But that's it for this video. What do you think of rogues from what you've seen so far? Will you be playing a rogue in Battle for Azeroth? Leave all your thoughts in the comments section below. A big thank you to all of our supporters over on Patreon. If you want to hop on that train, you can find a link in the description below. Remember to leave a like just below the video before you leave, and if you want to see more, make sure to subscribe. But apart from that, thanks for watching folks, good luck and have fun, and as always, I will see you next time.